Okay, so the law of cosines works when you either know all three side lengths of a triangle, side, 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 or if you know two side lengths and the angle in between those. So sometimes this is referred to <coughs> as an included angle. Make sure you add that in there because it's stuck between two sides that you know. Well, <coughs> if you want to know side lengths, you can use one of these three formulas, whether you're solving for side A, B, or C. So these three are great for side lengths. And then we can use these three to find a particular angle. Um, cosine A, cosine B, cosine C, but we can just do inverse cosine to get those. So this is for angle measures. Okay, and like our last section, uh, we don't care if you memorize these formulas, um, but uh, those of you that know Ms. Bogart, uh, I, I kind of wanted to do this section at the end of this year, just because it's, a, it's not really important for calculus, uh, but she insists that the newer ACT often asks two law of sines, law of cosines questions, so she really wanted to do it now with, before the next ACT. I think on the ACT they give you these formulas when they want you to apply them, I'm 99% sure of that. Um, but we won't make you memorize them for class. Now, if you kind of break them down, and we'll practice this all next class, like actually using the stuff, but if you look at this one specifically, the first half of the formula looks familiar. C squared is A squared plus B squared. That's like Pythagorean theorem. But Pythagorean theorem only works on right triangles. If you tack on this part of the formula too, now it works for any type of triangle. It doesn't have to have a right angle. Okay, and then I have a couple examples typed up where somebody has typed or thrown the numbers in. So imagine if you called this side A, you called this side B, and you called this side C. You can see they start off with the formula. They're trying to solve for side C. They plug in 10 for A, 9 for B, 10 for A again, 9 for B again, and then they plug in angle C which is 47, and then that gets them to step two. Looks like they do some of the arithmetic in their head, but honestly, you're gonna need a calculator at the end anyway, so why not just throw it all in the calculator? And at the end, you can see that they do like the square root, square root of x squared to make it the x. So as long as you plug the numbers in carefully, there's really no reason to um, have any mistakes here. It finds the side link for you, and it always works, so it's not very tricky. Okay, over to the right, here's an example of someone using the law of cosines to find two angles. Um, they're using different Greek letters, so don't worry about that. We often use theta, which is a Greek letter, but you can use alpha or beta. This is uh, gamma, I think, I'm not sure. But if you wanted to find this angle, alpha, notice they wrote out the formula. <coughs> they plugged in the numbers, the side lengths, as it says and you just have to be careful. This isn't the angle here. That's the cosine of the angle. So then you just have to do inverse cosine of that and then you know how big that angle is. Go from cosine of an angle equals a ratio to an angle equals an angle. You just do inverse cosine. Okay, different angle, slightly different formulas. Numbers are slightly plugged in differently. That's what the cosine of beta would be. So inverse cosine of that is what angle beta would be. So again, especially when you don't have to know the formulas, it's just a matter of plugging them in correctly and making sure that we can use our calculator. Because if you're throwing all this in your calculator at once, you're gonna have to have some parentheses in the right spot and all that kind of stuff. So we do take one full day to practice that, but um, not a lot, because it always works. The other thing that we squeeze into this section is something called Heron's formula, which is a way to find the area of a triangle. So right now, especially on the ACT, if you had a question that said find the area of this triangle, you better hope that they give you the base length and the height, and you can do base times height divided by two. That's the only way you know how to find the area of the triangle right now. This one we'll do when we do law of sines. Again, we're just doing them out of order. That's why it's still there. But then we've got this other formula called Heron's formula, which is actually really easy to use and very, very convenient. Heron's formula 
applies when you know all three sides of a triangle. So I know all three lengths, but I don't know the height. If I knew the height, I could just do this. It says the area of any triangle is the square root of S times S minus A, where A is one side length, times S minus B, where B is a second side length, times S minus C, which is a third side length. And so then your question should be then, well, what is S? Where is this S that they're talking about? S comes from adding the three side lengths and dividing by, what do you think they might want you to divide by here? Well, the common answer here is usually three. Why would three be a reasonable guess? It'd be like an average, right? You add three things up, divide by three, that gives you the average. This is not an average, though. It's divided by two. It's something called semi-perimeter, which means half the perimeter. Perimeter would be add up all the side lengths. Semi is half. So be careful. It's not a three. I know that that kind of seems like that's what it'd be, but it'd be a two. And that's it. So if you calculate S and you can plug all that stuff in, one side length, second side length, third side length, you can get the area of any triangle. Very easy. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples so we can see how this is going to play out. The first one's a little bit of a trick. You can throw these numbers into the law of cosines if you want to. And we did this in last period. We had a few more minutes though, I think. And something like, I think it was angle A was zero degrees which of course doesn't really make sense. How do you have a triangle with an angle of zero degrees? So if you're careful with the numbers here, this one was just trying to remind you of something back from your geometry days. If A was 10 and B is three, even if you line them up, if C is only 13, the only way they're even gonna connect is if they're all like on top of each other. So that doesn't make a triangle. So. You can't have a triangle unless the two smaller sides add to be bigger than the biggest side. Now, if you don't know that, that's not a big deal. You do log cosines, you plug in the numbers, you get an angle of zero, and then you realize, hey, that doesn't even make sense. This wouldn't be a triangle. But let's look at one where the numbers do make sense. Okay, so I'm gonna sketch a generic triangle. I don't really care what it looks like. I'm not trying to draw it to scale. But A is supposed to be 87 feet, B is 86 feet, and C is 105 degrees. So as much as you may wanna do a Sokotoa equation, a Sokotoa expression, or a Pythagorean theorem, you're not allowed to here because it's not a right triangle you're forced to do law of sines or law of cosines. Not law of sines, because we don't have that. But I'm given side, angle, side, so law of cosines is perfectly fine. So its formula says, if you wanna know side C, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, so a lot like the Pythagorean theorem. But then it also has minus two times A times B times the cosine of C. So if I put those numbers in, it's gonna look like that. Oops, this is square. And so C would be the square root of all of that. And so at some point you're gonna need a calculator anyway. So again, this is a lot about just making sure we can plug it in correctly and know what it's doing for us. But So I did that, my answer was really big. I forgot to do square root, so. All right, and then, so then there's the third side. Now, you could probably break this down into some multiple right triangles and do that, but to do that, it gets really complicated. This one's much easier. Then for angle A and angle B, we just have a different formula. So B squared minus C squared plus a squared to b 
you see. And we could throw the numbers in, do inverse cosine, and what the calculator tells us is what angle A would be. So for time, I'm going to skip over actually plugging that in, but we'll practice that next class. It just works, though. There's no, like, exceptions. Law of science, unfortunately, is not that simple. Okay, one more area of a triangle if you knew side, side, side. So this is Heron's formula. Square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C. Where S is the three side lengths added together divided by two, not by three. So you figure that up. You plug it into the formula four times. You plug in the side lengths three times. You throw it all into the calculator, and then you know what the area of that triangle is. Nothing more or less to it. Very, very straightforward. So that's why I say it's probably the easiest quiz of the whole semester, especially since we don't make you memorize the formulas and you have to have a calculator. We really just have to practice making sure that we can do that. So we will do that next time, but for now, we are just about out of time.